It's very impromptu. This is the first day of training. <laughs> It's the song of the redeemed Rising from the African plain It's the song of the forgiven Drowning out the Amazon rain The song of, the song of Asian believers Filled with God's holy fire is every tribe, every tongue, every nation A love song born of a grateful choir It's all God's children singing glory, glory Hallelujah, He reigns, He reigns All God's children singing glory, glory Hallelujah, He reigns Let it rise above the four winds, caught up in the heavenly sound. Let praises echo from the towers of cathedral to the faithful on the ground. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, this persists. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none truer than this. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. Powers of darkness tremble at what they've just heard. Cause all the power of darkness can drown out a single word. It's all got children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. <laughs> Well, they're in sports and minister for us this afternoon also. Amen, amen.
believe in organization this song brother Donnie and I were going to do yesterday we didn't get to do it but uh, I'm going to try it again try it today I have left the land of bondage with this earthly treasure I've journeyed to a place where there is love on every hand I've exchanged the land of heartaches for a land of pleasure I'm camping, I'm camping in Canaan's happy land. Every day I'm camping in the land of Canaan. And with rapture I survey the wondrous beauty grand. Glory, hallelujah, I found the land of promise. I'm camping, I'm camping in Canaan's happy land. Out of Egypt I have traveled through the darkness dreary Far over hills and valleys and across the desert sands But I've landed safe at home where I shall not grow weary I'm camping, I'm camping in Canaan's happy land For every day I'm camping in the land of Canaan and with rapture I survey the wondrous beauty grand. Glory, hallelujah, I found the land of promise. I'm camping, I'm camping in Canaan's happy land. Yes, I've reached the land of promise with its scenes of glory. I've journeyed into a place so lovely and so grand. I've been led by Jesus to this blessed land of story. I'm camping, I'm camping in Canaan's happy land. For every day I'm camping in the land of Canaan. And with rapture I survey the wondrous beauty grand. Glory, hallelujah, I found the land of promise. I'm camping, I'm camping in Canaan's heavy land. Every day I'm camping in the land of Canaan. And with rapture I survey the wondrous beauty grand. Glory, hallelujah, I found the land of promise. I'm camping, I'm camping in Canaan's happy land. Amen. 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 i tell you something else at the midday. Uh, this morning, I, I was talking to Aaron last week, and I told him, I said, look, if you come in, there's nobody playing that guitar over. I said, you uh, come on up like that, you know. And I've kind of asked Brother Luis to kind of join in with us. We got more musicians around you can shake and stick at when they all get here. But anyhow, I was looking for Aaron back there after service this morning when we was having our uh, altar call and everything, you know, and I kept looking and I kept looking. I wonder where he's at today, and I looked, and he was sitting over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyhow, let's go to the Kia C here for a while. Let's all stand. In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles vanish, hearts are men. In the presence of the King, we're standing on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And I know that there are angels 
all around let us praise oh We are standing in His presence on holy ground, in the presence of Jehovah, in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace. Troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the presence, oh hallelujah, of the King. Amen. Amen. About the Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, amen. But I want to see you. How do you want to see him? To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. I am lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we say, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. And you're loving. Truly it's holy, risen and holy, holy, and I want to see you. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Amen. Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. If you'd like to turn in your scriptures, turn to Revelation 3, and then we'll go back to Malachi 4 to pick up our thought from this morning. Uh, today would have been the children's day, you know, the, the youth having the services, but because some missing, they wanted to move it over to next Sunday. So it'd be the next Sunday for the, we're doing that. Okay. Uh, remember the announcements that have been made and remember now that at the end of the month, July the 31st, brother Royo Seriano will be here the August the 7th. Brother Quinn will be with us August the 10th on a Wednesday. Brother Reed will be with us and August the 14th, brother Nestor will be with us. So remember that. Amen. So you got it. Revelation three and Malachi four. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you for everything, Lord. And thank you for the day and the grace that we have the time, Lord, that you've allowed us to be able to receive. And we need you so much because we know and realize that there's nothing within ourselves within ourselves that could make anything but we rest in you and we ask you to come now and speak to our hearts and our lives and Lord, just forgive our sins and lead us and teach us thy ways that we may walk therein. Lord, we know and realize there's many sicknesses among us and many afflictions. And you said you sent your word and healed us. So we believe you and we thank you and guide each and every one. Just have your way, forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and keep us in Jesus name. Amen. Revelations 3.14. And unto the angel of the church of the lady of Seans write, these things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, 
the beginning of the creation of God. All right, we're going back to Malachi because remember what we said as it starts in Malachi 4, verse 4, you tie together the entire Old Testament coming up, and that's why he would say, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, see, because that's who the word comes to. That's the whole Old Testament is proof of one thing. From the old, Old Testament, look what it's doing. It stands and looks forward to see the entire journey of mankind, and it tells you how it's going to take place. So remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in horror for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Now watch. Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart out. Now notice not hearts. Turn the heart. There's one heart there. All right. Heart of the fathers to the children. That was the Old Testament saints to the New Testament message and bringing Calvary and bringing in the New Testament, the kingdom. All right. And then there's to be an end time to happen to what? And the heart of the children, see? babes in Christ. You remember, we're still on the statutes of perfect man. Remember, we're still on Peter. Add to your faith the virtue. All right. So then we're still back with that same thought now. And the heart of the children. See, it doesn't call them fathers there, right? Because it's not. In the end time, what is to do? Take the children and turn them back. Okay? Take babies in Christ. Because you're not born again as adults. You're born again as babies in Christ, all right? And to turn the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. You may be seated. The Lord add his blessing. You understand why we're using those things that, to me, you know, to me, the entire Bible ties together and makes a beautiful picture that no matter what you're at or the point you're thinking about, like I said, why would he come all the way through and then summing it up and say, remember you the law of Moses? Then makes his statement of the future coming. See, and what's to take place and showing you all the way through the complete plan of salvation to mankind to bring it from the, the, bio, the point of the book of Acts and the children and, and in the Old Testament people turned to the New Testament message, all right, now is to take those children that we are, because we're not born again as adults, right? We're born again at faith, starting our journey, and now turn our hearts back to the original Father's message, which would cover then the entire Bible. Because it would cover then, as we were talking this morning, that what did the prophet do? He came, not as he said. He did, it's not in the beginning of his ministry, but in the winding down when he began to declare his message. See, now that message has come forth to you and I, and that way it will turn our hearts back. And what did he say on 327 of the Church Age book? This messenger of Malachi 4, Luke 17, 30, will do two things. Turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers, you know, the seven, the, the, the teachings of the word, right? He had to go back and pick up that to bring us to the faith of the fathers. Then when we get to the faith of the fathers, you can start talking about the message the prophet brought. Amen. Now that's the contention that I've made from 40 years or more of preaching on it to you to try to get you to see that, see, that's why you've got so much scruples and problems is because you've got a bunch of novices, that's right. you know, I'm not making them de unregenerated. I said novices that are trying to interpret the word of God to us when they don't even know what the word is saying themselves. They haven't experienced it. Like I've said, illustrating it. All right. I've got one, two, three, three computers in my home. We have a slew of them here in the building. 
but the computer is the most damaging thing you could ever think of to this end time people because you can just pull up anything you want to instantly of what is being said. And you don't, you don't see the ministers that spent the 20, 30 years of their lives like I had to do to study the message, to search for months for a quote, you know, just one little thing to search and search through the message. They're not familiar with the message nor the Bible mm -hmm, that's right. mm -hmm. because they, you know, they're just not concerned. But, uh, okay, I, I'm sorry about this morning. If you think I was, I just kind of had a point and you'd have to know me uh, all day yesterday. It was there uh, last night at the fellowship meeting. It was there. Uh, this morning got up with it there, come here this morning with it there. And when you do, then, uh, it may sound like you're just jumping around fumbling for something, but no, I want you to know one thing for sure. We have had a message. We are not looking for a message to come. We are not searching for another messenger. We are not trying to find somebody else that can interpret this for us. We have the Holy Spirit. No matter if it's just a birth, it's still the Holy Spirit. As I was saying the other day, why is the trouble when, you know, the people in the dark ages, they gave their life for the gospel and the prophet said the same spirit they had is the same spirit in us to just overcome daily. Well, which one would be the worst looking like? It looks like that's a horrible time back there. And it was. They physically gave their lives. But now you've got to live daily and walk in the word of God trying to, you know, in this day to overcome. Yeah. See, if you ask those people, said, well, which, you know, if you could show them both illustrations of where to live here and where to live here. Yeah, they'd say, <laughs> give me the gallows, yeah. you know, because that would just be something you could walk up and do. But we've got to overcome what? Lady Osea and overcome the, uh, sorry for wording, but the Antichrist moving among the people of the message to uh, pervert it to where Amen. you cannot be certain Amen. about what you believe. You know, because of this quote, 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 quote. Right. All right. But see, the computers, I said, it's damaging because people can use it, but it's also wonderful that we can use it yeah. to the benefit of being able to search out things in a hurry. So forgive me if you thought, well, what was he doing this morning? I'm telling you, I didn't know that I would change the message until this morning. So I had the burden yesterday, had it all last night and different things. And, uh, I just tried to drive one thing this morning. We're not looking for something else to come. This message is the, the message that will change us from mortal to immortality. If not, where are you going to get it? This message, I believe, Brother Brown's message. Now, I'm talking about the message. I explained the messenger is not infallible. He made mistakes and said things wrong and different kind of thing, but the message is infallible. Amen. All right. Then that message is the headstone. Amen. What else are you looking for? Was the cornerstone, the revelation of Jesus Christ. We still, we read that in the Baptist. We studied that. We talked about it. Now, why would the headstone be some kind of other something? We'll see that in a minute when we get down to the point of trying to bring out the understanding. So, you know, if you thought, well, I wonder what was he doing? Uh, one of these days you'll understand me because I don't understand me. Okay. <clears throat> All right. What was our dealing this morning? We were talking about how in Wednesday night we were dealing with it, how the messenger comes at the end of the age. He always comes at the end of the age. We showed you the drawing Wednesday. You make your choice. You can say, well, the end of the age, brother, could this be this, that, or that's all right. I showed it to you Wednesday, the end of the age. You can come down on the bottom and run out to here, top and run out here. 
You come to the same place. I showed that Wednesday night. All right. But if you go one way, you're going to lose a lot of the Bible. You say, well, what does it matter just so long as we get there? You're not going to get there. You mean God has spent all of this time of trying to get you and I back to the word and he's going to allow us in and let us finish up this with just part word? I don't think so. It'll have to be the pure unadulterated word. All right. Now, we showed this morning and bringing it down how that Brother Branham says in the rapture message, not in the time when he begins to sound, the, but when he's, not when he starts out, but when he, he begins to sound, the, not when he starts, let me restate it, right? not when he starts, but when he begins to sound his message. So this message came forth then by somewhere right in there about 62, you can see him driving especially when he gets to sirs, is this the time? He begins to bring it down and laying it in, and then he starts going, and that's when you've seen the people start turning away from him because they knew what he was saying. They was accepting him as a prophet and doing this, that, and the other until he began to say, I and my father's one. Well, I didn't hear Brother Brown say that. No, I didn't hear Jesus say that. But that's what he said. That's why they killed him. Because of him saying what he was. Well, when Brother Brown began to lay it down and say, Malachi 4 was supposed to do this. Doop, doop, doop. Here it's done. And in the message of Malachi 4, they would be the taking up all the loose ends and bringing it down. Then you see him taking up all the loose ends. And it would proclaim to the rapture of the church. Then you see him preaching this all the way to the future home. So if you don't follow it that way, I'm sorry. That's just the way I am. You remember where we were talking about on the end time messenger where he said this message could not have been preached 40 years ago. There was no way because you, you've got to have a foundation. You've got to do the first work of Malachi. Right? Before you can do the life part. Look what you'd be dealing with. You got to turn, and they did, the Old Testament saints, turned at Calvary, coming in Jesus Christ, from there to the New Testament message. All right? But see, you and I had to have a restoring of the New Testament message before you can talk about the end time to turn us back to the faith of the fathers. I told you, don't take it, and I'm off with stature of a perfect man. Because that's what we were doing. We've seen the stature of a perfect man is the very point that turns us from what? The new birth, faith, to back where the disciples were. And there's your faith of the fathers. But I've also said this for 40 years. And this may sound stupid and crazy, but this is the way I think, I guess. Every war person in the world, seven billion, this day could have the new birth. It would not be the change of the body. Right? Be a wonderful world, wouldn't it? Everybody in the world could stand at the faith of the fathers. Be a wonderful world. There wouldn't be no change of the body. Because all you got among the disciples is a prophecy of that. Change the moment, twinkle the line, et cetera. So you see where we got to get to. It's not to just talk about these virtues to find out what they are. It's for us to strive for them to be made into our lives. By the opening of the word, to where we could return to the faith of the fathers. But where do you hear that in the message? We don't need that anymore. We're up here in this. We're over here. We got this all figured out. I said, ah, yeah, we, we, we got all that great revelation, that seventh seal is polygamy. 
Yeah, they got it figured out, ain't they? But ain't nothing you and I can do about that. And I ain't concerned about it because I'm concerned with you and I. Those who want to hear to come to a place to where we can be changed. I'm not, excuse me, worried about anything else. I'm not worried about internet. Welcome to internet. We have people out there that even count this our church, their church and send tithe. No, amen. We count them. That's part of us. But to the rest, that's you. But yet, welcome. Do the best you can. Well, let's move on in God to where we can see things. But you see, like I said, now on the internet today, I said it this morning, on the internet today and the preachers around the message, they're preaching about the great horrible thing that is happening in Russia. Brother Joe ran it off for us to show where they're voting these things. You know what they're voting? That you can't have church in a home. How many of you live in a subdivision, especially built the last 20 years? When you signed a covenant in that subdivision, you know what you signed? That you cannot have a religious service in your home with over a certain amount of people. But you think we're safe. Do you know in this community, you cannot put a church in this community, this city of Lula, without it being recognized and associated with a church that is in this community and established. That is their law. You want to go right over here? We can get a witness to it. He was the... He was up in the, and he couldn't get this church right here because one downtown wouldn't allow him to come under their charter part. He had to go over here and get a Pentecostal church to allow him to come in this community. Come on, church. We're saying, well, well look at these horrible things happening in these other places. Look how simple it's coming among us. Okay. You don't keep up with those things. Do you know that in 1974, there was a law passed in Georgia that you couldn't travel over 25 miles to church? How many of you came over 25 miles to get here today? Okay. 99% is here. But see, we, we don't look at that. We look at this horrible happening somewhere. And it's just closing in. Okay. Take it from there. You see why that I'm hard and strong and talk the way I do. Okay. But let's get into something now this afternoon from the point of what we've been dealing with about the messenger always comes at the end of the age. All right. The messenger coming at the end of the age is the most marvelous scriptural um, what would you say for a prophet? It would take a prophet to understand the statements that he made about the end of an age. And I ask you the question, you know, end of what age? What is the end of the age to you? Every messenger brought around said, come at the end of the age. We'll read, we'll read it. He said, never at the beginning, but always at the end of the age. And he said, Paul came at the end of the age. Well, if Paul came at the end of Ephesus, how did he bring the message to Ephesus? Right? Then we'll let Brother Branham, we've let him do it, but we'll let him do it again where he resets the things that puts things in perfect order to where that you and I can see. But watch this thing that, or this part that we talk about. That what we're looking at. So let's start reading. We'll read five this afternoon. 
Look what he said on the 70th week of Daniel. He's talking about long come Wesley and age and well, you know, the Wesleyan age is called Philadelphia, the greatest age, age of love ever had the Philadelphia age. And John Wesley's time, he went out in Pentecost. He went out, in come Pentecost, and that was lukewarm. Then we'll go back and find out what kind of a message would come to the Pentecostals at the end. And remember, each one's come at the end of the age. St. Paul came at the end. The rest of them come down at the end. St. Irenaeus, they all come at the end of the age. So we established that. Now we've got to establish where the end's at. Yeah. Yeah. You say, well, we, you've already read this over and over to us. Right, deliberately to where we could bring this message and watch the message unfold of the prophet. Now watch. Don't pull up the overlap picture yet, Brother Joe, but pull up the other one we was using, or Brother Anderson, or Brother Joe. Okay. Everyone's using. Bring up the one we was using Wednesday night that shows the entire thing of the church ages, you know. So we, we redone this in a little bit. We'll see another one. This one we've used for many years. Wade's used it many years. We've been using this for many year, years. All right. See, showing the church ages, the messengers, and the length of time. And as I said this morning, I gave it to you. Don't get caught up in, well, these messengers, this is one of those, one somewhere in here, Columba, he died before the age ever started. Don't get into that. But what did we give you this morning? What did Brother Brown say? Paragraphs or page 76, Ephesian church age, which is church age book. The death of Paul before the revelation was given does not at all annul the fact that he was a messenger to the Ephesian church age. For the messenger to ever age, regardless of when he appears or goes, is the one who influences that age for God by means of a word manifested ministry. And Paul was that man. All right. But now we've got to establish, did Paul come at the end of the age? Or did he come right here? Amen. Right. Did he come at the ending of Pentecost? Amen. Huh? Which way did he come? Go right. remember now when we get over here, there's no messenger to this age. Brother Brown says it. No messenger to the lady of seal. He said the Holy Ghost came himself. Now, you say, well, what's this drawings? But let's think about it. So go ahead now. Remember the drawing. The messenger comes at the end of the age. And the overlap, which is an overlap, is an open door. That's what Brother Brown says. And got it on in here. So okay. We'll just keep reading. But to think about it and see, you got the porters. We used that years ago in a message. Remember, the porter stands at the door, open the door. Right? The shepherd brings the sheep out. And he the porter can close the door. That's in Jesus' ministry, right? Okay. Now watch. So let's just think about it. Let's read one. Go ahead now and pull up number two. Is this the sign of the end, sir, in Jeffersonville? So remember what he said. Remember the quote we just used. Go back. Go back to number one. We need it. Pull number one. Okay. Look. And remember each one's come to come at the end of the age. St. Paul at the end. Rest of them at the end. Watch him. Come down to the end. St. Irenaeus and all the rest of them. The other one's age carried over to the other one. Lapped over. Now we'll show in a minute where Brother Ryan said there is never an 
a direct start or abrupt end to an age. So we're letting him say it. Lapped over, watch him. And he's taken it up and went on to the next age with it. Remember, you're talking about the body of Jesus Christ. Right? Through the seven church ages. The body of Jesus Christ. Go ahead now, to number two. Is this a sign of the end, sir? He's talking about the seals tore loose. Paul was the first messenger we found. And what did he do? Declared war on what? What did Paul declare war on? If he come as where you're saying the end of the age, like on over, you know, what did he declare war on? Paul didn't declare war on the age of Ephesus. He brought the message to Ephesus. Right? So watch what he says. He says that his messenger, Paul was the first messenger, and when the first trumpet sounded and the first seal was broke loose, remember this is when he was bringing the ages and the messengers before the foot seals broke. Paul was the first messenger found it. What did he do? Declared war on what? Not the first church age. He declared war on the Orthodox Church for not believing the Messiah sign that Jesus had produced to them. Are you reading? Who did Paul rebuke? The Pentecostals from getting away from the Messiah sign of the Lord Jesus Christ or the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ living among us. Who did he do? Huh? Declared war on what? Yep. Now watch it. A messenger rebukes the previous age, brings a message to his age. Okay. So who did Paul declare war on? The Orthodox Church. Not the first church age. Right? Okay. How about it? Now watch him bring in something that will be very helpful if you'll listen and think about it. Go into number three. This is taken from the lady of sin, church age, this priest in 60, 12, 11. I do that because a church age book is, I'll always say church age book. I define it. All right. The angel of this lady of sin age to end it up now. He will be at the end of the age like the rest of them, like the Bible. Come on. At the end of it, because the angel always comes to rebuke for them for what they done to the angel of the church of Lady of Sin, write these things. Paul in the first church age rebuked them for getting away you want to read it? Revelations 2 and 4. We rebuke them from getting away from their first love. He's rebuking Pentecost. That's him. He comes to rebuke. To the angel of the church of Smyrna, write these things. Each one is to the angel at the end of the age. Paul, the end of the age. And on down, end of the age. The lap over. Now, end of the age. End of the age, that's what makes it lap. What makes it lap? Because the messenger comes to rebuke backward and bring his message forward. He's in the overlap. What is the overlap? We're going to get to it in a minute where Brother Ryan said it's what? It's the open door, which is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul had a message, right? right? Under the angel of the church at Ephesus. He rebuked the Pentecostals for getting away from their first love and brought the message to the church at Ephesus. Yep. Right? Now watch him. See, it makes a lap over to the angel. Speaking what was, this laps over here to the angel. In the end of that age, see, 
picking up right here, making the lap like stair steps going up in the seven church ages. <clears throat> a lap over between every age. It's hard to draw. You'll have to look real careful. Go ahead, Brother Joe, and pull this up because I asked them back there to do a lot of impossible things, but they always do it and, and get it up for me. So go ahead and pull it up. What we tried to draw. If you'll see what we've done, we pulled them together. Where the other had to do it like this. But now you can see it better here because you can't see it over there in the dark. Look here. There's the overlap. There's overlap between every age. It's never an abrupt end of Ephesus or start of Smyrna. God never does anything like that. I love him for that. The one that really caught me to show his grace is when Brother Branham said, God dealt with Israel 40 years after Pentecost. You said, well, did he give them the Holy Ghost? No. They had to come up in the church to do. But he dealt with them. He didn't stop dealing with them until after Titus come in and destroyed Jerusalem. Forty years that God was dealing with them after they had rejected him. What a wonderful God you and I serve. Watch this as we catch the overlap now. See, you say, where did Paul come? Right here, which was Pentecost. Right here, Irenaeus Falls. Martin, Columba. Me? And an overlap. God makes an overlap. But what is the overlap? Well, it's just this one age running into this age. No, it's not. Remember this statement until Wednesday. There has never been a bride in an age. Show it to me. We're in Lady Osea. Yes, physically speaking, it's out here. But we're supposed to be born out of the age. Well, no, we're still in the age. Boy, you really. I thought the new birth called us out of the age. Into Christ. Right? So then remember the lap over now. It'll be between each one. Never an ending of one age and a start of another. You would not have the lap over if you've done that. You've got to let one lap into the other. Do you realize in the days, oh, uh, let's see, can I quote? Mm, I'll get names wrong, so I won't try. Somebody wanted Brother Branham. This is a story told. You probably heard it. Wanted Brother Branham to go talk to their father, I believe it was. He's up in age. Brother Branham goes to talk to him. And he's in there just laughing and having a big time. When he comes out, they ask him, what about it? He said, your daddy is in another age. Sure. You realize God is so great until he didn't tell it to all the Lutherans that when Wesley started his message that all of you people are lost that don't take his word right now. It was years back there before the message could spread from one place to another. So it's an overlap. Overlap. The overlap is not just age. That's why your messengers stand there. Overlap is a revelation of Jesus Christ. That's where your messenger stands in that revelation of Jesus Christ. Rebuking the ones getting away from it, bringing the message forward. Okay, go ahead. Let's pick it up. He said, that's this lap over here. He said, that's what makes it lap. That the messenger stand in a position. So go ahead to number four. It makes him stand in a position. In what? Just standing somewhere? Where is the messenger standing? 
in Jesus Christ. Right? right. That's his message. It's an open door. It's a lap over. Paul had the message of Jesus. Irenaeus had the message of Jesus. Right? Your lap over is the revelation. Time wise, it's a man standing with the message. That's why that if you look back at the drawing, you can't figure out by the date or the age of where the person was and put it in a place. Right? right. Columba was not was dead before the age ever started. Now, here's where I was this morning. Do you realize what a prophet is? Have you ever thought about it? A true prophet of God, you realize what he is. We talk about him as being what? God's mouthpiece, right? The one who speaks for God. So now, John on Patmos, right? He wrote the message to each church age, right? Yes. Now, was that God doing that? We'd have to agree, right? right. God placed the ages with the seven churches that was there around in that area and was placing it to John, yep. right? God placed the ages. Your prophet said the one closest to the truth. Why did he not choose? Go to your church age book and read it. Brother Brown spoke twice as much of Polycarp as he did Irenaeus. Read your church age book. Took twice as much time talking about Polycarp. But what did he say? He said, Polycarp lent to organization. He said, and that was the reason he was rejected as the messenger. You know what he's saying? Have you ever thought about that? Who rejected what to do what? He said, and that was the reason he was rejected. You know, evidently, Brother Brown probably had him wrote down as the angel. Right? Come on. Why would he say it that way? He said Polycarp was rejected. So he probably had it wrote down. Paul, Polycarp. And God says, no, son, that's not it. It's Irenaeus. And Paul, Brother Brown went back and checked out Polycarp's life. I read a little bit out of the pre nicene Fathers. Polycarp had a great revelation. The only thing Brother Brown said he could find was he leant towards organized religion. You understand what I mean? Brother Brown was probably going to put Polycarp there. Because there's no name to the ages, right? The Holy Spirit said, uh huh. Who put Martin there? Who put Columba? Who put Luther, Wesley? And who put the Holy Ghost coming on the day of Azusa Street in the fullness of the baptism? That's what your prophet said. We're going to read it. We've done read it over and over, right? Who put them there? Who picked the messengers? Was it Brother Branham? That's the point I'm trying to get you to see. John wrote the ages and the, who it's to, you know, Ephesus, Smyrna, Persia. Brother Branham had to be in the same spirit that John had, right? And then he put Paul, Irenaeus, Martin, Columba. Don't you think Brother Branham knew that Columba wasn't even born in that age? 
He done a lot of research. So was the age over here or was the age over here? What does it matter? Because no bride, no born again believer is in a church age. So my brother Branham could say, Lady Osea is over. They need to say, Lady Osea will end when the bride is taken out. Then he'll say, Lady Osea, the seventh, will go all the way through the millennium. He knew what he's talking about. It's us that don't. Right? You say, well, what's the importance of that? I want to make sure I'm in that overlap. Right? If we're not in the overlap, we're not called out of the church. Now, may I remind you of something that on the drawing in your, of the, where it was drawn out at Jeffersonville, you better believe there's no bride in an age. If you don't, you got a lot of trouble. The blackness in there was not the bride. If you got that much sense, yeah, yep. the blackness was not the bride. Yeah. Well, you know what the last age was? Brother Branham said, I left a little light. He said, because it went into total darkness. If you can't look out there now and see how dark Lady Ocelia is, you're, you're sure spiritually blind. Uh, but you see, the bride was never in that age. You said, we're in the bride age. Every age at a bride age. There's a great meaning of that. We'll get on it Wednesday. What are you looking at? It. I want to be in the overlap. I want to be where the messenger's at, don't you? Come on, is that right? The scripture said we got to go out unto him. He was crucified outside the camp. Well, I'll just stay in the camp. No, no, that's not Bible. It's Bible to go out of the camp to where he's at. Out of Lady Osea into Christ. Well, what do you mean we're still in Lady Osea? I hope you got enough sense to realize that I got a little sense and can, can look around. The age is dire. But we're supposed to be called out of the age. That's why the scripture would say, love not the world and the things of the world. Because that's the age. Okay. <laughs> I'm slow. But listen. Let's go ahead. I want to make sure that the, we're going to deal a lot with this overlap, even if we have to cut some others. we we'll look at number four. We've been over this one. In the first seal, Brother Branham explains the church ages. And look what he says. Then along came the Pentecostal age with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they cabbage down on that. Yeah. There cannot be no more ages. That's all of it. Listen, that's the fellow that are, not the, that's the lady you'll see in age. And we found in the study of the scripture that the messenger come to the end, come to the age, messenger to the age, come right at the end of the age every time. Paul came, come at the end of the age. We find out at Irenaeus at the end of the age. Martin at the end of the age. Look, Luther the end of the Catholic age. There is no Catholic age of the seven church ages, but it's a Catholic age because it's a dark age. The thousand years of darkness of the Catholic church. And Luther comes out of that darkness, stands in the overlap. What is his overlap? The revelation of the just shall live by faith. That's what made the overlap. He stands in the revelation. Look at it. Luther at the end of the Catholic. And what? Wesley at the end of the Lutheran age. So now he's telling you. 
Wesley comes at the end of Luther's age. All right, now that's what he had to say. Wesley, we think that what? Wesley came at the end of Luther's age. He didn't come up here. He come at the end of Luther's age in the overlap. Come on, read your message. And then what did he say took place? And Pentecost at the end of sanctification through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So, at the end of the age of Wesley, come who? Oh, Elijah came. Hold on to your point. Look. And at the end of the Pentecostal age, the Holy Ghost came. We're going to reread that one, right? At the end of the Pentecostal age, we're supposed to receive according to the word. Now, you know what Pentecostal age? Pentecostal age is the lady of see you, right? right? You're not talking about back there in the Bible. It's the Pentecostal age is the lady of see and age. I got the quote if you need it. And we're supposed to receive according to the word as God helped me tonight to show you through here that we are to see and receive a messenger that will take all those loose ends out there and reveal the whole secret of God for the rapturing of the church. Now, where did Brother Adam come into being at then? Right. Where would it take place? We'll get back to it in just a minute, but I was trying to find it. I've got it in here. It's in the the questions and answers on the seals. I got it on one of the others. He said, no messenger to the age. Because the Holy Ghost came in his fullness. On Azusa Street. Well, see, everybody in the message, well, Azusa Street didn't have nothing. Brother Brown said it had the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The fullness of the baptism. He calls it another great prophet. But we don't, uh, may I quote it this way, Paul said, I've become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Have I become your enemy because I can remember and have read? Because I was reading this and teaching this before the computer ever come into being. Right. You know, for me. Right. I was teaching this in the late 60s and early 70s. Right? No problem. All right. We'll get to that in a minute, but just remember, if you need it, I'll be glad to find it. It's in, in my message somewhere. If not, we can find it in a hurry. See? Why? Because the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, Azusa Street Pentecost. Now, back on Azusa Street, the Holy Ghost came himself. It's so what your prophet said. I'll give it to you two or three times. If you need it, Brother Joe, if you can find that part, I had it in my notes and I got it laying here in my Bible somewhere. And if you need it, I can find it in here. Well, I don't say nothing and I can't prove the prophet said it. Okay. Okay, we got it. Paragraphs. It's paragraph 52. On questions and answers on the seals, paragraph 52. And you see each one of those ages only taking a dip into the Holy Spirit. Justification is the work of the Holy Spirit. But the baptism is the Holy Spirit. Now watch him. That's the reason it took a prophetic prophet to come down. No messenger to the age. The one-eyed black man was not listed as one of the early, as one of the church age angels. You only have seven angels. Brother Brown calls him the messenger, right? But he's not one of the angels. Why? Because it's the Holy Ghost himself. Look, that's the reason it took a prophetic prophet to come down. No messenger to the age. Because the Holy Ghost came himself in the fullness of his baptism. I surely don't hope you think that's Brother Branham. Go here. But at the end of the age, 
and it always ends upon the others, we fin find there then the messenger sent, and all of these scruples and things. Right? See, your prophet knows what he was talking about. But we say, no, Zeus Street didn't have nothing. They just, oh, they just didn't have nothing. He called it the fullness of the baptism. Okay. That's paragraph 52, questions and answers on the seals, 1963. Okay. I want to get this overlap. Go ahead to number five, Philadelphian church age. Okay. The angel appears right at the end time. And just at the end time to rebuke the church for, its, for losing its first love and how it's got away from God like they did. That's Paul rebuking Pentecost for losing his first love. Orthodox church, we read that a minute ago, like they did down through there, the ages. And at that time, the rapture comes to take the church home. The church goes up just at the time of the message. What message? The runs message. I thought it was to reveal the secrets. Yeah. Same thing tonight. What? The angel messenger comes to back. Going up, we're reading down here. To rebuke them each age like that for what they had done. So that makes a lap over in each one of the church ages. Just lap right back over there. One another like that is climbing up like a steps. It's laying. It makes an overlap. Okay. I got a lot more here. Let's drop over. Where does this laugh over take place? Drop to number nine, brothers. We're going to have to get feist because time's running out. Number nine. This is the Philadelphian church age. Reveals himself the open door between the two ages. Then watch it. It wasn't in the Lady of Siena age, neither was in this other one, the Philadelphian age. But it was between the lap over. Cause I'll prove it in just a few further down, and you'll get it, you'll see that it makes it so rich. What about it? Not this this lap over is not in the Philadelphian age. It's not in the Lady of Sin age. It's in between. What was that lap over? That was your Azusa Street Holy Ghost. It came in its fullness. Do you realize that the name of Jesus is what we're talking about? We're going to read it. You know, the name of Jesus began to be restored between the sixth church age and the seventh one. The name of Jesus began. Oneness never started until about 19 and 11, 10, 11, 12, right in there. But the name of Jesus. You mean, Brother Dale, the name of Jesus had to be restored? That's what your Bible says, your prophet says. That. Well, what did they call him in between? Charlie, Joe, Tim, John, or who? What? Oh, you're smart. What does it mean when you say the name has to be restored? It's not that you lost the name. It's the meaning of the name. And the meaning of the name was the person. An open door. Let's read it. Next one, we'll get it. Going to the next, all right? All right, number 10. Excuse me, wait a minute. Let me see. We may still be in number nine. Yeah, stay on number. Remember I said, what is the open door? He reads the scripture set before the open door. What is the open door? The open door comes in the lap, eight, lap over. Right? Not in Philadelphia. Not in Lady Osea. Now, come on, church. Then you'll see why the Holy Ghost came himself on the day of Pentecost. Because it's got to lap back into the age of Wesley and begin to bring the truth. 
come on out into the age of the Lady of Sia. Watch him. What is the open door? The revelation of the supreme deity of Jesus Christ. What did he say to his first church back there? Back in this age. He said, I am he that was, which is, shall come. I'm the first and the last, right? Message to the first age. I am the almighty. He said it three different times. Made himself deity to the first church here. Before he went into the last church age, he said, I set before you an open door. And if you want to see the revelation here, it's where he would build his church. And the only way that he could take his church is back to the revelation of what he is. It's not a messenger standing between time. That's why you don't even have to be in the age part. It's his revelation. Come on. Paul and them, I mean, uh, West and them were Trinitarians, right? Would you want to read some of the little books of mine I've got about it? You want to read how he bragged on Jesus for being God? But then when he finalized it up, he said, but said he is the third, third person of the Trinity. Because he didn't know the revelation. And God began to restore the name. that it was lost and couldn't be found. The revelation of the supreme deity of Jesus Christ began to be restored. Where? Between the sixth age and the seventh. In the lap over. In the open door. Come on, folks. If you missed the whole rest of the message, remember this prophet that we speak of. The Elijah of this day. We know it's the Lord Jesus Christ. But he had to have a man to work through. But do you realize he stood between man and eternity in the open door? Do you realize his message is the open door? Do you realize his message opened heaven to where we could go? Right? His deity. If you want to see it, go ahead to the next one. That was a Philadelphia. That was paragraph 141 uh, through 143. This is paragraph 128, the Philadelphian church. Age. Now, what door was opened about Jesus between these two ages? See, just between. 1906, about when the Methodist age and the Dwight Moody of them, and them faded from the scene. There come forth a break forth. There come forth a break forth of the people receiving the Holy Ghost, speaking with tongues, and things come back into the church. That's about right in about 1906 along in there. All right. What took place then? After that began to come along, the first thing you know, they organized. Now, he even names the people that started doing it. They organized the old general council, which went in, which went in, now called the Assemblies of God. Watch. See, out of the church, out of that church that was lapped over in what took place to them, he said an open door. A revelation of his supreme deity is the open door. The revelation of Jesus Christ coming back to the church. The name of Jesus being restored. We've got out of, I hope, from looking at lap over and ages and things and thinking about a man standing. Put him standing there in the revelation that he's got. You realize then this messenger stood where no man has ever stood. Between time and eternity in the overlap, which is an open door between the Lady of Sea and age 
and eternity. Putting him coming at the end of the age. To bring the message. End of what age? Age of time. Eternity is not an age. He stood between to bring the message. In the lap over. The open door. What about it, church? See, that's what makes the lap over an open door. What makes the lap over? Watch what he says. Go to 10A. Now let him say it to you where you won't be fussing will be about it. This is the message of baptism of the Holy Ghost, 1958. But he said just between the Methodists and Pentecostals going out, you know, going out of Methodists, coming in of Pentecostal. I have set an open door before you. There you are, the name restored again. I have set an open door, but I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. What is it? That open door. You realize it's you and I right now by the revelation of God are standing in an open door. Not in Philadelphia. Not in Lady Osea. The revelation of this message has called us out of the age into Jesus Christ. And he's the word. So the prophet's message then is what? The headstone. Let's see if I can think of the quote. In the something, he's the cornerstone. In the full church, he's the headstone. That's a direct quote on the last part, I know. In the church, like, you know, he was the cornerstone. But said in the entire bride, he's the headstone. Mm -hmm. This is the age, excuse me. This is the age when the entire revelation of Jesus Christ is to be brought forth. It's not just talking about ages and buildings and places and doings. It's to illustrate, to try to show where we're at. See, we're supposed to be called out of the age. But you know what our biggest problem is? We're, in, we're uh, too much spiritual to be worth a lot natural because of what we're thinking about. We were too much natural to be very much spiritual. Right? Because we still are in the age. Time is out here. But we're supposed to be in Jesus Christ. And when God looks down and sees his bride in the end time, he sees her standing wrapped in his robe of righteousness. The revelation of Jesus Christ. What is the message of this age? How much greater could any man have ever spoke about Jesus Christ than this prophet messenger? But yet I ask you, how many of you have ever read this church age book? I ain't asking for no raising of hands. Afraid it might be embarrassing because you know you go. I got half of it. How many have ever read the seal book? How many have ever read all the books? We got one hand back there that says she's read every book and I believe her. She may not have all the books I have, but she's read all she's got. But she may have more than I've got. But I've read every book that I have. Why? Because if I'm going to believe this message to be the end time message, 
I don't have to worry about trying to find anything else. I'm not concerned with Russia doing this or this doing that. You know, there was somebody telling me, who was it, that brother this morning telling me that they're saying that Obama is the king of the South and, and Putin's the king of the North. Yeah. Boy, they got a good revelation. None of that ain't got nothing to do with the Antichrist. Oh, yeah, both of them's Antichrist. That's no problem. But that's, that's not what you're talking about. See, I don't mind preaching to people that know what the prophet has said. Because you at least got to admit that I'm bringing what he said. Well, you've left this out. Bring it to me. Bring it to me, something I've left out. And I'll read it to you. Because I want to be right. But you see, church, it's not natural things or overlaps or places or whatever. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. I thought Brother Branham said that that was what the new birth was off of Christ's mystery. That it's a revelation of Jesus Christ personally to you. Well, then what would he say in Christ's mystery? What is the headstone? Yep. It'd be the revelation of Jesus Christ personally to you in the highest, height, highest, height of where it's supposed to go to. Why wouldn't you want to know about Jesus? But yet you know all about everything else in the world. Right? They laugh at Nanny and I because we can't, you know, we can't even order something off of a computer. We're computer illiterate. I use mine for what I need. But yet, you know all about that, but do you know about the seals? Do you know about the restoration of the bright tree? Do you know about Daniel 70 weeks? We proved that in the talking to the ministers. Yeah. Out of 30 ministers, maybe five or six of them had never read the book of Daniel 70 weeks but yet they could tell you how wrong you are. Never read the book. A lot of them didn't even have a book. But they can tell you all how wrong you are. At least, church, we ought to be the most Jehovah Witness reading room people that has ever been. And I'm not making light of them to have a great thing. They sit down and read and they get it all figured out. And when they come to your house, you say so-and-so, they say so-and-so, you say so-and-so, they say so-and-so. Because why? Because they trained. Right? You ask the people this man, I don't really know. Like one preacher said one time, he said, now, he said, that adoption is simple. But he said, that statue of a perfect man is deep. Well, I thought that's what it was. I thought the statue of a perfect man told you I've come to adoption. We're going to get to that. We're heading that way. I thought that's what told us how to become adopted. <laughs> what about it? Come on, brothers. Let's just quit. I poured out my heart to you. I told you I had a burden last night and I had to get it off this morning off of that part to try to bring the, the things into the right place. And to make sure, because you see now they're going to start moving in because they've got to. And do you think that the believers of this message won't turn you in? They think they're doing God a service. You think all these on the internet claiming Brother Brown was wrong? You think they're not trying to say they're doing you a service to save you from this cult? 
What about it? But do you see why there is an overlap? Because, listen, it's one revelation overlapping into the next one. All right? This is coming forth. The next messenger goes back, overlaps his message, and carries it right on. May I quote Brother Branham? All of the prophets in the Bible, what did they do? They made an illustration. I'm not saying he was wrong. I'm just saying I doubt a lot of them know each other. <laughs> but what's he saying? He said no prophet would bring his message until he checked it with a prophet before him. That's paraphrasing, but it's close enough. He checks his message by the prophet before. That's how Daniel knew that he was going to be out of there in two years. Huh? Because he lapped it back to the other one. You look at those church ages. Paul coming in there with that great revelation. Listen, and Brother Branham says, the pure unadulterated word lasted four ages. Then it began to deteriorate. You realize, Paul, when Irenaeus come along, he looked back to Paul. When Martin came along, that Brother Randall credits as being the greatest of all. Never hardly a meeting that they didn't have signs and wonders in Martin's life. But he looked back to the one before him and said, I'm lined up. What about Brother Branham standing, looking all the way back? Oh, he bypassed Luther and Wesley and them because he didn't eat that. You better believe one thing for sure. If you got the Holy Ghost today, you ain't going to reject Luther's message of the just shall live by faith. Now, he's teaching of other things, the Godhead of things. But remember, God winked at those ignorances, but he don't wink anymore. Right? He commands all men to repent, the Scripture said. We have no excuse. But you see, I could stand and shake Martin Luther's hand and say, thank God for the message you brought. Of the just shall live by faith. And I ain't going to look down, but now you're just kind of a little mixed up, you know. No, I, you, you ain't up here where we at. Oh, uh, I left it laying in there and thing <laughs> where Joe ran it off. But it's something that's similar. If you think you're something, you're just going to find out you ain't nothing. That's the best way to say it. Do you understand? Then we'll go into the bright age, and then we'll pick up another message or two. That is, the messenger would come at the end of the age. He would rebuke the people of the previous age from getting away from their messenger, and then he'd bring the message. Brother Branham, what did he say? He said, to uh, paraphrase, but he says, uh, the Baptist can look the, now if I get them wrong, put them, you put them in the right place. He say, like the Baptist can look at the Methodist and and tell them they're wrong. And he said the Pentecostals can look at them and tell the Methodists they're wrong. I'm paraphrasing, but it's very close. He said, but I can look back and tell them all they're wrong. You know that a prophet stands before no one. That's why all these goofballs think they're doing something. You can't correct a prophet. Amen. Nope. We were talking about it last night. What do you think about the prophet that was told to go marry a prostitute and have children by her? Now, that's contrary to the Bible, isn't it? 
How is God going to condemn that prophet when he told him to do it? Right? Yeah, it was contrary to the word to go do it. Come on. I got a lot of questions that I love to ask people. Those are things that maybe we don't have to figure out. They're there. That's right. What is he going to judge everybody by? The word for the age. He's not going to judge the Baptist by the Methodist message. He's not going to judge the, the Methodist by the Pentecostal message. He's not going to judge you and I by Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostals, or whatever. He's going to judge us by this message that has been brought to you and I. And judge us because we haven't made ourselves available to the message. Yeah. Well, brother, damn, we just don't have time. I got to do this, that, and the other. My mother would get up in her day and she'd cook breakfast before we got out of bed. When we went to the field at daylight, we got up, we watered and fed the mules or whatever we were going to work that day, and went on to the field. By 9 o'clock, Mama was in the field. It didn't matter what we were doing. She was there working. 11 o'clock, she went back home and she cooked us a meal. We went home to eat. Before you ate, you fed your mule, you watered your mule, or you weren't going to eat. 1 o'clock, we went back. Before you went back at 1 o'clock, you watered your mule. Might give him a little bit of extra corn, you know, every once in a while. Because you were going to work him till dark. Three o'clock in the afternoon, my mother would come to the field with water and tea cakes. Plain old tea cakes made. And we ate that. Because you know what? We wasn't going to quit early. When the sun started going down, we could go home. She went home early and she cooked supper. You still didn't eat till you fed and watered that mule. Because she wasn't going to let you. What are you talking about? She had time. May I quote it about John Wesley's mother? How many kids was it? Bunch. How many? 17 kids, and Brother Brown said she had time every day to, to read the Bible and talk to them. Well, yeah, we don't have no time. Okay, let's stay. <laughs> but we're the bride. We're getting ready to get out of here when Russia comes down, when they put that white, that woman in the White House. I hope to goodness they put her in. I ain't voted on the presidential election since John F. Kennedy, and I've thought about going and registering where I could vote for her. <laughs> Why? Because I want to get this thing over with. And whatever it takes. What do we got, brother? I might want to get it over with, but I'll promise you right now, I'll never vote for Hillary Clinton. Oh, okay. <laughs> He just don't want it over as bad as I do. <laughs> Go ahead. Two eleven in the red book. There is a pound. Anybody have a need? I believe Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. What is this message to reveal? Jesus Christ. The things about Jesus Christ. Listen, the things about Jesus Christ that even these prophets and apostles didn't understand. What a message we've had.
beneath that flood. Anybody have a need? Open lap, open door. Right where we're at, right now. Go lay that map for it this way. When he opened that door, there ain't no devils in hell could get that door closed. Right? There ain't enough devils in hell to close that door. My sins away. Wash all my sins away. And there may I though this he wash all my sins away thou dying them thy precious blood shall never lose his power here we are till all the ransom church of God and saved. Our brother's got to go for a physical. They got him on blood thinners and things that's bothering his body. So we just pray that when he gets there, not that he has to ask them to do, but it'll be a surprise to him when the doctor says, well, I think we just need to stop this and, and get away from it. And tried a little while without it. Because we believe you. We believe all things are possible. And we love you. And why wouldn't we want to believe? Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I flow. Anybody else that just have a need? Redeeming love has been my thing. These in the name of Jesus Christ, believing that all things are possible to them that believe. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. A nobler, sweeter song I'll sing, thy power to save. When this poor father, our little sister, Lord, she fell down and hurt her back. We condemn that hurting and all of these problems and pains in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the When this Sinner's blood beneath that blood. Their guilty stain. In the name of Jesus Christ, take away these problems from our sister, Lord. It don't matter what it is, we condemn it under the blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Anybody else? Sing thy power to How about it? Are you standing in the revelation? Are you standing in that open gap? We're supposed to be where the messenger's at. Right? You got to be where your messenger is. You better find out where the messenger's at. 
Well, we know for certain who the messenger is, and we know for certain who's the message. It's the one and the same. All right? Then we just stand in that message and say, thank you. What else would we want? You know, well, I'd like to see this and I'd like to see that. Why don't believe God and let him just take care of things. Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. The burden's off of our heart, Lord, and we know we had one last night and the different things, and we ask you to just help us. And we just want the people to see that the open door that this prophet has brought before all of us of the revelation of Jesus Christ is where we must walk into and that we must see you, Lord, and be led by your loving grace. Forgive our sins. Be with everybody on the way home. Give a safe journey in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. Woman D. Well, woman in the Bible days, last meal almost gone. God sent Elisha make his word known. Said, woman, don't you worry. God sent me today. And before you even ask him, help was on the way. Just hold on a little longer, help is on the way.